that the first row here is all the, the, the true labels or like all our ground truth images. And then we pass this through our autoencoder and this will be the reconstructed, uh, reconstructed images from our 32 dimensional code vector. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this neural networks and deep learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about autoencoders and carriers. So first of all, I'll just talk shortly about what autoencoders are and what they can be used for. And then we'll jump straight into the code and I'll show you how we can set up autoencoders and carriers because these autoencoders is actually like really useful um, in modern deep learning and neural networks applications and projects. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server, I'll link to it down in the description here. You can come join our channel, chat with our computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. Also, if you're a member of the channel, you can also get some personal help with your own problems or and your own projects. If you have some problems, I can help you out if you're a member. So thank you guys. So first of all here, we're just shortly going to talk about what autoencoders are. I've already made a video where we went more in depth with autoencoders and then we did the code in PyTorch. But in this video here, we're just going to shortly cover what autoencoders are. And then we're going into carriers to actually like see how we can implement it in carriers as we're, as we're, as we're done throughout the whole tutorial here with TensorFlow and carriers. But also encoders here can actually like be used for compromising data and so on as we're going to do in the code example in this video. So we'll say that we're taking the MNIST data set with, uh, with these handwritten digits. Then we can actually like um, pass it through these auto encoders and then we'll end up with this code vector as we can see here in the red or like the orange color. So we're actually just downscale the or like the information about our images. So we can take our input image, which is a free here to the left. Then we just pass it through our neural network uh, layer by layer. And then we get this code vector, which will just be different kind of features, uh, features that describing the image that we fed through our encoder side. So we both have an encoder side. We have our code vector. And then after we have our code vector, we can actually decode that code vector um, again. So we will actually like reconstruct our, our, our input. So we have the input. We just pass it through the neural network. Then we, then we compromise. Uh, the information and the features in our image down to a vector with an arbitrary number of values. You can use eight values, 20 values, depending on like the complexity in your image. And then you can just decode your image again and reconstruct it as we can see here on the right hand side. So we're now going straight into the fun part here in the code. So we're using Google Colab here and also the GPU on, in Google Colab to actually like train our neural networks as we've done in all the other videos throughout this neural networks and deep learning tutorial. So first of all here, we're just going to import the modules that we need. So we're going to use carriers and we're also you're going to use the MNIST data sets that is already implemented in, in carriers and also NumPy here. So we're just going to run this block of code. So we'll import the modules. Then we just go down here to the next block of code where we're just going to load in the MNIST data set. We just called MNIST here because we imported it up here from carriers.datasets. And then we're just going to call load data and then we can actually just store our, our data in our training set and also in our test set. We don't really care about the labels here because we're just using an, an, an auto encoder. So we don't need the labels for those images. We just want to have an input image. Then we want to compromise that data. So we actually like have less features. So instead of we have an image that is maybe like uh, 28 by 28 in the dimensions, then we'll have like 700, 784 uh, values representing or like describing that image. We can actually like compromise that down to only like five, eight values describing the whole image, and then we can reconstruct it with a really low loss. So here we're just going to run this block of code and we will just store our training set and also our test set. So we're training our neural network on the training set and then we're doing the tests on the test set. So the test, set, so the test images is actually like new images that the neural network hasn't trained on before. So we get a, get a general model that is not overfitting. So here we're just going to download the data set. We can see that it just downloads it from uh, the carriers data sets and we can also see here that it's now finished then we need to pre-process our data set before we can actually like pass it through our neural network so first of all we're both going to do the same thing for our training set and the test set so first of all we're just uh, normalizing our images so all the pixel values so these are the intensities that we're just dividing by 255 so we're normalizing it so all the values in our image is actually like between zero and one which is just good when we are talking about neural networks and how to learn uh, learn under the hood. We're going to do the exact same thing for our test set. And then down here we need to reshape it because we're just going to use an um, like a standard uh, artificial neural network where we just have these different kind of like nodes or neurons in our network. So we're not going to use convolutional neural networks 
in this video, but I'm going to create another video with autoencoders where we're using uh, convolution and neural networks to actually like uh, do autoencoders with images. But in this video here, we're just going to flatten our, our, our images. So instead we have like a 28 by 28 or, uh, or the dimensions of the MNIST data set. Then we're just going to have one vector where just all the values are stored. Like, so we take the first row and then we just append the second row after that one. So we just have one vector with the size of 784, as we can see down here. So we actually, we just flatten our images in our test set and our training set. And then we're just going to print the shape here. So when I run this blob code, we can see that we now have 60,000 images from the image data set in our training set. And it, this is the dimensions or the shape. So we'll just have one vector with 784 values in that. And then we have 60,000 of those vectors with this dimension. We're going to have the exact same thing for our test set. But in our test set, we don't only have 10,000 images instead of 60,000 images. So when we're going to train our neural network, we will actually like pass uh, 60,000 vectors of this dimension through our neural network for each epoch that we're actually like training our neural network on. So now when we have set up our train set here, we can actually like start implementing the autoencoder. So again, as we know from the slides, we need both an encoder side, we need a code vector representing all or like storing all features from our input image. And then we're going to have our decoder side that tries to map from the code vector or the feature vector uh, back to the reconstructed input image. So here we're just going to choose the dimensions from our encoding or like the size of our code vector as we can see here. So we're just going to choose 32 here. We can also try 16 and eight because this is actually like a really simple uh, image when we're only using the MNIST uh, data set. But if you have more complex images, you can try with 32, 64 and so on. Like you can just choose an arbitrary, uh, arbitrary number uh, in the encoding dimensions or the size of our code vector. So here we can see that we have 32 floats that we're storing all the values from our images in. So this is actually a compression of a factor of 24.5 uh, if we assume that, that the input is actually 784 floats. So this is a, a really significant uh, compression factor when we're actually like doing this. And as we're going to see, we will not lose uh, that much information or like that much information uh, in our in our actual like reconstructed uh, image. So here we're just going to have our input image. We're going to use carriers.input. So here we're actually just setting our input layer of our neural network. And the shape here will actually just be 784. So this is just one vector representing one image that is flattened. So here we can have our encoded. Encoded here is the encoded representation of the input. So this will just be the end after our actual like after our actual like encoder side. So in this example here, we just have one encoder layer and one decode layer, and then we have our our um, our code vector. So I'm going to show you as well how we can actually create a deep autoencoder where we actually have multiple hidden layers inside of our model. But as we're going to see, if we just have one encode layer, one decode layer, and one code vector, we can actually like get really nice results without like even having that many neurons in our neural network, and and also a, a really really or like the simplest neural network that is even possible. So here we're just going to set our encode here equal to layers. So we're just going to take a dense layer because we're using artificial neural networks. Then we set the encoding dimensions here, which is the output of our dense layer. So the number of neurons in our output layer, or like in our in our in, in this encode layer. So that's what this will be the dimensions of our code vector. We set the activation function, we use ReLU, and then we just uh, like put it together with this input image. Uh, input image layer as we can see up here. So here we're actually just creating a sequential model or actually like constructing a neural network. Then we also need our decode layer after our um, encode vector. And then here again, we're just going to pass here the, through the encode layers. So after the encode layer, we're just going to have this decode layer where the output, um, where the size of the output is 784 because we actually want to reconstruct our image. So, so our input is 784. Then we have one layer with 32 neurons and then we just have our output layer with 784 neurons that is trying to represent or like reconstruct our image from the input then we're going to combine it so this model here mapped the input to its reconstruction so we're going to create the whole auto auto encoder here we just set it equal to carers.model so now we're actually just creating a model from carers that we can then compile and train on with our data set we just pass in the input image here and also the decode here because we have put it all together here in the sequential model by having this like input here and then also the encoder here at the end of our layer. So now we have a whole autoencoder here. We can also create both an encoder and also a decoder. 
as we're going to see, but now I'm just going to run this block of code. So we actually create an auto encoder. But when we're going to show what the encoder actually like does and what the decoder does, we're just going to divide those things in as well. So this is the whole auto encoder, but we're also going to just create an encoder. So like the encoder side, and then we're also going to, to, to create a decoder side here so we can separate them in. And then we can actually see what is going on in the encode layers and also in the decode layers uh, when we're working with our 32 dimensional code vector. So here we're just going to set our input here as our encoded input which is the dimensions of our code vector. And then we're just going to take the last layer here of our autoencoder, which will actually be the output of our decode layer. And then we can set up the decoder here where we just pass in the encoded input and also the, the decoded layer here for the encoded um, input. So this is just how we can reconstruct our image so we can see what is going on on the decoder side um, later on. So we're going to run this block of code. We have now created both our encoder our decoder and the total combined autoencoder up here. Then we can compile our autoencoder and then train it on our data set. And then we can go in and take the individual um, individual layers with the encoder and the decoder and also the code vector. So we can see exactly what is going on in our autoencoder. So now we're just going to compile our uh, neural network with the Atom optimizer and we're going to use binary cross entropy um, as the last function. So we're going to compile a model then we're going to train it with this fit function as we know throughout this tutorial with carrots and tensorflow we pass in the training training images here uh, as we can see here we need to pass it in twice because we're just using autoencoders and we're not ha really having labels or we don't need labels to train our autoencoders then we're going to specify the number of epochs that we want to train up for so in this example we're just going to go with 20 and also the batch size of 64. we want to shuffle the data, data set every time we run through a new epoch um, so we actually get some random, like some random order in our training process. Our validation set will just be our test set uh, in this example here. So we're just validating on our test set. So now when I run this block of code, we will actually start the training process of our neural network. And I've set the, the hardware accelerator here to the GPU. So it will actually like train on the GPU. So it, it runs uh, way faster. We can see like each epoch takes around five seconds, four seconds here after I load in all the images into the cache. We can then see the loss and also the validation loss here, and it should decrease over the number of epochs until it has converged to some, um, to some, to some certain value. So here we start with a loss of 0.19 uh, and a validation loss of 0.13. So the reason this is lower is actually like because for each of the batches, it is actually like calculating the loss, but the validation loss is, is first calculated after the, all the batches or like at the end of the epoch. So now here we can see that the loss is actually like decreasing both for the, the, the loss and also for the validation loss. And down here after like 10 epochs, we have actually like already, already converged to a, to a loss of 0 0.09 and also 0 0.09 here in the validation loss. So we actually have a model that is pretty good both at, both at generalizing and doing reconstruction of images that it hasn't seen or like it hasn't trained on before. We see here it doesn't get better from like epoch 10 to epoch 20. So this will be the end result when we're only using one encode layer, one decode layer, and then we have 32 uh, floating values in our code vector that is actually like representing the whole image. And then we can use those 32 values to reconstruct our whole image um, later on again with a loss of around 9%. So we get 9% loss, but we can also store our image in in, in way like with an opto factor like um, of 24.5 times. So now we're just going to encode some images. We're going to call predict. So we're going to use our encoder that we've trained and also the decoder. So we trained the whole autoencoder together, but now we're going to separate them up. So we use, use the encoder and the decoder. So we can actually like, rip, uh, like show and display what is going on in each of the layers. So we're just going to have our encoder dot predict. Then we just pass in our test images. And then we're also going to decode here again, which will just be where we're predicting on our encoded images because the results here of our encoded images is actually like our code vectors. So this is our original input image. This is our code vector. Then we pass in our code vector and try to decode that again. And then we will actually have our decoded images or our reconstructed images so we can see what is actually going on. So these images ideally should be exactly same as these images that we pass in here in the encoder prediction input. 
But now, as we can see, we get a loss around 9% of those images. But now we're going to run a blob code and we'll just do predictions on our encoder and the decoder side. And then down here, we're just going to use matplotlib to actually like display both the, uh, the input image, so like the ground truth image and also the reconstructed image. So we can see how much loss do we actually like get or like how good is our neural network actually like uh, to reconstruct our image. So here we just have a for loop running through the number of images that we want to display and then we just like infill them with matplotlib so we won't go into details with that we're just going to run this blog of code and then we can see down here that the first row here is all the the, the true labels or like all our ground true images and then we pass this through our autoencoder and this will be the reconstructed uh, reconstructed images from our 32 dimensional code vector so as we can see this is a really nice reconstruction again remember we're only using one input layer one code vector and one uh, one decode layer so this is a really really simple neural network with not that many neurons we can see how fast it was to train and also do predictions on um, later on it took four seconds for each of the epochs uh, but training on 60,000 images it took four seconds to train on 60,000 images so it just shows like how simple the model is and how good the results actually are so we see the seven here is actually reconstructed pretty good Two again really good one zero four one four we can see here with the nine we get some more gray areas up here the five is also pretty good and the nine is also actually pretty good some would say that the nine here that is represented or like reconstructed is actually like better than than the original one but as we can see these these images uh, are really really uh, close to each other we only get nine percent loss from this image to this image and this image to this image um, at an average so this is really nice and it can be used for a lot of different kind of things so in another video i'm going to create some more deep auto encoders and, and use more complex images so we can see like the real capabilities of auto encoders and what it can be used for and also when we're working with images and also images in higher dimensions when we're talking about like 250 uh, 300 uh, times 300 images then we actually like need to use or it's more ideal to use convolutional neural network as autoencoders. Uh, so we're going to cover that in another video. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It will help the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently also doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about basic image operations, camera calibration, stereo vision to get information about the depth in the images doing some post estimation, creating point clouds and doing a lot of cool stuff. So if you're interested in computer vision and, and those things, I'll link to the tutorial up here or else I'll see you next video guys. Bye for now.